Hi there, I'm Patrick Belton of InsureTech, FinTechRevolution.com. This presentation is a short brief on some of the keys to innovation and innovation centers and technology hubs at organizations. And just, we want to discuss a few of the fundamental keys to which a fir some firms commonly miss the boat on when they are establishing their innovation centers or innovation teams. They make some fundamental, often we see that they make some fundamental strategic errors around giving birth to their innovation hubs. But it's crucial that these need to be assertively corrected in the early stages of infancy of developing your innovation center. Otherwise, one is left with a rudderless, directionless ship effectively situated in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Lacking wind, lacking GPS, lacking oars, lacking anything. If one thinks of some key words that hearken to innovation or innovation centers, uh, one jumps to mind quickly, and that is geography. There is some aspect of, and critical aspect of geography to innovation. And often this is a key strategic error that firms are blind to when they are establishing their innovation teams or innovation centers. Geography has a deep and profound meaning and it means a, a bunch of different identifiers that jump out for them come to mind off the top of my head. First would be immigration. The second would be diversity. The third would be tolerance. And the fourth would be location. The key takeaway I want you to keep in mind is that geography, in terms of innovation, geography has a deep and profound meaning as it references many other things. So the purpose of this particular brief is not to go deep into the geography of innovation. I'll do that another day. Um, but I do want you to keep this in mind. Next, what I'd like to do is for us to highlight in a bullet point format some other fundamental keywords to keep in mind when pondering innovation and establishing and managing your innovation center. The first that comes to mind is diversity of thought creating work conditions that enable and foster this. The second would be inclusion. Your work environments must be authentically inclusive. Third would be uh, freedom of thought, creating a safe space where this is made possible. Another would be freedom of speech. A safe space for this must exist in order to advance the best interests of your organization. Another item would be the freedom to challenge. This must be made safe to do so. Innovation staff must be enabled to challenge not just the way your firm does things, its current orthodoxy, but also be enabled to challenge the way executive leadership and staff think. Another item would concerns top-down direction from supervisory leadership. This must be avoided as it is stifling to innovation and leads to poor morale and staff turnover. And the next item that I want to mention is um, innovation participants, as I call them, which is an innovation employee. They should not always be strictly led or strictly directed um, or have every one of their tasks or activities or initiatives micromanaged. And that leads into another item, which is micromanagement of employees. Avoid such behavior emanating from supervisory leadership at all costs because this stifles and obstructs innovation and it leads to poor morale and staff turnover. And so let's go into another item that I want to mention on our bullet point list, and that concerns shared learning and discussion. Creating a safe space for this that is built into your work week. Too many firms, organizations, fail to do this within the context of their innovation center. For many of these organizations, what does take place is informal and on the fly, which is okay, but there's no formal sanctioned time for this activity from man set out by operations management within the context of the innovation center work week. And this is, this is a necessity. On the fly is critical, for sure, but so is setting aside that assigned time for debate learning and discussion throughout the work week. And this naturally leads into another item I want to mention in my bullet point list, and that concerns debate. How can an innovation center be expected to innovate when its members are not debating, are not discussing, 
are not sharing knowledge. They're not learning together. They're not discovering together. They're not arguing and so on and so forth. Sometimes this actually might resemble a bickering family within the context of an innovation center. Arguments may be intense, but they will remain respectful. But see, this is different than sales and customer service and the business operations where really you're not gonna see that type of behavior or even condone it too often. But in the context of an innovation center, which is circulates often around ideas, this is a natural organic part of that process. So it needs to be welcomed and expected and a safe space for it must be created. And the next item I want to mention uh, is diversity of membership. This is crucial and that's achieved through race, religion, culture, interests, age, demographic band, ethnicity, and so on. This naturally leads into my next item, which is immigration. The Innovation Center, to succeed, must be, at least partly, staffed with immigrants. And this means, in turn, that the Innovation Hub uh, Center must hire where the immigrant pools of talent are located. And this may, ne may necessitate locating the primary innovation center location in a particular city region that contains vast pools of immigrants. And your organization may not be located in that type of geography. So you might have to put your innovation center, or at least some staff component of it, in a third party geographic locale somewhere else in the country. At the end of the day, you want to go where these vast pools of immigrants are. So this could also mean that you have satellite locations scattered across the country where these other immigrant clusters can be found. And a crucial item that I want to highlight is tolerance. This is a key. It's fundamental because it means tolerance of thought, tolerance of speech, tolerance of ideas, as well as how things get done at the level of the individual worker. Tolerance also references diversity of inclusion, whereby hires, employees, emanate from incredibly diverse ethno-cultural, religious, socio-economic, career, work, and corporate backgrounds. So in this section, I want to highlight some areas where I've noticed organizations have missed the boat when it comes to either managing their existing innovation center, which might be virgin a year or two old, or just when they're setting out to establish and create their innovation hub. The first item concerns choice of location. Innovation centers require a unique setting and location that serves its unique set of needs, not the business operations needs. Even though the innovation center is established to serve the needs of the business operation, the choice of location doesn't always necessarily line up with where the business ops are located. By placing the innovation center in the right physical locale, you're enabling that center to be more enabled to successfully serve the business operations objectives. I have noticed how some organizations have located their innovation center in suburbia. Generally speaking, doing so is throwing away a key fundamental recruiting tool, and it's also ensuring a failed strategic choice has been made because it's not recognizing nor accounting for the needs and desires of the younger generation that will predominantly, likely, comprise the team members of your innovation center. And the, the younger membership I'm referring to, generally speaking under the age of 35, uh, prefers to not own a car, not drive a car to work, take public transit to work, or they, like they, they'd rather take public transit to work, they'd like to walk to work, which means they want to live in, and work in an urban center, not in suburbia, which necessitates actually buying a car. The next item where some organizations miss the boat regarding their innovation center is the choice of leadership. Business operations and administrative type people, technocratic type people, often, in my view, should not be chosen to lead an innovation center, and especially technocrats, especially those types with the human resources backgrounds. That will lead to certain failure in the innovation processes. These types of people are good at one thing, obstructing and stifling innovation because they lack the skills, critically, they lack the vision, and they often lack the risk-taking thought and the subsequent actions that are required to succeed in the innovation process. The third item where organizations miss the boat, it, it concerns choice of design and layout. Innovation centers require a unique, 
physical design and layout to suit their function, their purpose, and their objectives. This also facilitates and enables talent recruitment and retention. It also meets the expectations of the younger generation, which will primarily compose the membership of the Innovation Centre. And if I make a, uh, another comment uh, in a new bullet point, and it concerns really the insurance industry at large. And I will likely offend many with this uh, comment, but it doesn't mean that I'm wrong. Traditional insurance types are usually speaking the worst and the last people on earth who should be making any decision regarding innovation and anything associated with it. Insurance leadership reside in and were raised in an extremely traditional industry, well known for its backwardness. Whereas outsiders, disruptors, and others, uh, individuals who are what I call hybrids with holistic professional educational backgrounds, those types are better suited to lead innovation centers. A hybrid person is someone who has worked in the insurance industry, perhaps, in different insurance roles, but they've also pursued some other business interests outside of the insurance industry. Thereby, they hold a more holistic, all-encompassing view of the world and view of society. So that's, that's the end of this uh, short brief on some of the keys to innovation from Patrick Belton at InsureTechFintechRevolution.com.